smartwatches do you need one probably not but are they still kind of cool gadgets especially if you're into fitness or just keeping tabs on your health absolutely in this video, I'm going to show you everything you want to know about the Mebro A2, a budget smartwatch aiming to offer surprising value for its price against the big brands. We'll see if it tracks steps, heart rate and even your oxygen levels accurately. Plus, we'll break down its features and see if it stands out in this crowded smartwatch arena. So buckle up, hit that subscribe button and before we get technical, let's crack open this box and see what's inside. So inside we find the usual suspects, the watch itself, a charging cable with usual Mebro logo on it, a spare strap, hmm nice, and mandatory manuals and warranty cards, just in case things go south. Oh, and a QR code, it's not for the app, just some digital manuals. Cool but not groundbreaking. Alright, let's ditch the cardboard and see what this watch is all about. Design time. So. The smartwatch hits you with a pretty unique design, kinda like Amazfit T-Rex mashed up with Garm and Vivo Active. Don't get me wrong, it's a good looking budget watch but the plastic frame keeps it from feeling super premium, but keeps it light and the chrome accents add a touch of class, I would say. Watch feels solid for the price, no creaks or wobbles. Two clicky buttons, swappable with any 22mm band if the silicon is not your vibe. No tools needed, nice touch. If you need a peace of mind about water, two ATMs says showers are fine, light splashes too, but hold your horses, no display lock here. One playful wave and your screen is doing its own synchronized swimming routine. Not ideal my bro, not ideal. Remember my pool test of the A1? Display went nuts, but hey, it survived the chlorine. This A2 is a different story. Speaker and microphone holes make me nervous about the chlorinated water, even with that water ejection thing. So while the 2 ATM rating says showers are cool, pool parties with the A2, not really. Better safe than sorry. The H2 throws a curveball with a surprisingly bright TFT screen. Now, it's not a fancy AMOLED, so the blacks are not gonna blow your mind, and the always on display definitely saves some extra battery juice. But here's the thing, it's still vibrant, colorful, and refreshingly smooth with that 60Hz refresh rate. The companion app is simple and gets the job done, tracks your activity, health, all the basic stuff. It's available on both Apple and Android stores, so no surprises here. Pairing, easy peasy. The app does its thing, sets everything up. You can use the watch solo without a connection to the phone, but no notifications and your data resets daily kind of defeats the purpose to be honest. So the app itself, straightforward, shows your daily steps, heart rate, sleep patterns, even throws in some fitness features for the workout enthusiasts. Now the watch interface, simple, easy to navigate, but sluggish. Not the snappiest, which gets annoying, especially with the honeycomb menu, needs work to be honest. Plenty of preloaded watch faces, but some are questionable. Not many pro vibes, more like a meme territory. But hey, you can also customize them with your own pictures. Earlier today, I was trying to switch watch faces and crash. Watch just reboots itself. Not ideal. Definitely software bug or some glitch. Alright, fitness time. 70 sports modes included, from running to yoga, not bad for the price. But how's the health tracking? Heart rates got constant and intelligent modes, but are they accurate? Time to bust out the trusty pulse oximeter and see what's up. Resting state, easy peasy. Both the watch and the oximeter give the same verdict. 73, 74 beats per minute. Zen mode activated. Now, for some action, I don't feel push ups to get the heart rate pumping. Bam! Watch says 94 beats per minute, oximeter says 93 beats per minute. That's very close. Seems the A2 can keep up well with the workout jumps. SPO2. Mm, it's here, takes 60 seconds which is kind of super slow, but hey, at least it's accurate, so oxygen champ status achieved. But the pressure feature, that's got me scratching my head, I thought it was blood pressure ready for a science experiment, but nope, it's just a stress meter on your wrist, like 
cool to check your stress levels I guess, but not quite the health metric I expected. Built-in GPS tracks your route and that's cool, but here's the catch, you can't actually see it on the watch screen itself, it gets transferred to the app, which kinda defeats the purpose, right? I'm not a huge fan of that limited axis. Time for the real test, step counting. I got to see if the A2 can keep up, right? So I busted out my vintage clicker, old school but accurate. So I clicked exactly 1000 steps walking around Liverpool downtown, you know, the usual. BAM! The A2 throws a crazy 5300 steps. Come on watch, did you count every fidget of my fingers? Even the app mirrored the insanity, at least the GPS route seemed okay, but no life tracking on the wrist, not exactly ideal for on-the-go fitness enthusiasts. So I did the test again, no GPS weight, I just walked. 1015 steps on my clicker, let's see how the A2 stacks up. And BAM! 1001 steps on the watch! Almost dead on this time. Crazy inconsistency after that 5000 steps hallucination with GPS earlier. I've tested dozens of watches over the past 3 years with the same method and none went full hallucination mode like this Mibro A2. Maybe I got a faulty unit? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Has anyone else had this step counting fiesta with their O2? Or maybe yours tracks every move like a dream? Hit me up! Sleep tracking? Yeah, the A2 tries, sometimes. I entered my sleep schedule and even ticked the track naps box, but it still missed nights or gave me crazy short readings, like the first night, barely a blip, next night, 4 hours, when I definitely locked closer to 7. Not exactly confidence inspiring for sleep nerds, just saying. Phone calls? The A2 got you covered, Bluetooth connects to your phone and the built-in mic and speaker let you answer and make calls right from your wrist. No more phone juggling, mic quality is decent but the volume could be louder. Bonus points for storing contacts on the watch itself. Notifications and messages, check and check. The A2 shows them just like the most other budget watches and I haven't had any issues. Plus, music control is super handy, just swipe the display left during exercise and boom, you're on the DJ. Just make sure you have some music downloaded on your phone. Ok, battery, 10 days with constant Bluetooth, max brightness and even that always on display, not bad. If you go standby mode you might hit 50 days, but who uses the watch on standby? Charge time, approximately an hour, but I topped it off with my slow solar charger for extra eco points. But the bottom line is, battery is solid, ditch the always on and you might even squeeze out 2 weeks. So, my final thoughts on the A2, it's not ugly but definitely not premium. For $36 US on AliExpress it's passable but no showstopper. User interface is sluggish and feels almost identical to its predecessor. Battery is solid, GPS is there but locked in the app, making it kinda useless on the wrist. So where's the point? Heart rate and the SpO2 are alright, but those crazy step counts, 5 times more steps than I did. Either my unit's wonky or Mebro's quality control needs a rethink. Mass produced plastic, not exactly confidence inspiring. But if you're feeling the A2 vibe anyway, there are links in the description. By the way, no sponsorships here, just grab this myself like you guys requested. So what are your thoughts on this watch? Hit me in the comments. Thanks for watching, catch you guys on the next one.